right, welcome to Book Club for Developing the Leader Within You. Uh, this is Chapter 3, The Foundation of Leadership Character. Great chapter. Who wants to uh, kick us off here? I littered this book with highlights. It was like, uh, I, I know this is sound weird. Uh, one of the things, and I heard this on the audio and it caught me off guard, but I love that he did it, is when, you know, when he's, uh, when he's talking in there, I know this is kind of unrelated to leadership, but he says, you know, hey, I'm gonna talk about some scriptures for a second. If you don't want to look at it, skip it. <laughs> I heard on, I go, I wonder if he wrote that in his book and that wasn't just the audio. And then sure enough, I read the same thing. Anyways. Um, Norman wants to participate in the book club. Uh, he's mad right now. He's, he's gonna go outside. FOMO. Well, the very first thing I highlighted was it's much easier to tell others what to do than do it ourselves. I highlighted. <laughs> that was just like, that was, that was a gut check for me, just in, in all things of my life, not just health coaching and, and leading other coaches and mentoring them, but it was like, he asked some of these questions like later on in the chapter that you can kind of um, ask yourself, am I the same person no matter who I am with? Do I make decisions that are best for others even when another choice would benefit me? Like, am I consistent? Like, do I consistently show up and do the things that I'm asking other people to do? Like a kid even, am I showing up in my marriage the way that I show up? for my team? Like, am I just as awesome and gracious with that group versus that group? So it's just, um, I love looking inward and I love that this whole chapter is about like focusing on those values and what's inside because the fruit comes from the outside. So don't focus on the outside appearance and, and what you're getting or the reward, you know? That's some awesome insight. Uh, and I, I was checking myself a little bit last night because I, I heard the, the chapter about a, a month ago, but reading it again, I was thinking the same thing. Not, not to, I didn't actually think about the marriage part, but, but a lot of the other things that you're talking about, that's, you have to, because people are watching and paying attention. Mm -hmm. Well, and Richard gets the worst version of me. I don't know about anybody else, but like, I'm the most comfortable with my husband, right? So he gets the worst version of me because I'm very comfortable with him. But that's a disservice to my marriage. But I, I want to be like the same Ashley that people look up to and glean from in other areas of my life in my marriage, too. So I just, yeah, I'm just, there's so much, so many things. I can kind of piggyback on that. Sorry, my camera's not on. We're still snuggled up in bed. But <laughs> um, kind of on that same note, Ashley, one of the lines that really stood out to me is that he says, the reality is that leading ourselves is often the most difficult task we face every day. Um, and it's right, right, you know, there with what you said, but that was the part that really kind of stood out to me is taking that same ownership of myself. And it's so easy to, to, like you're saying, look outside and not look in the mirror, but really kind of trying to step up in that area um, and, and look at myself as someone that I'm leading and not just look at myself as a leader of others. And so that's kind of been a big, I guess, consumption of thought this week, you know? This chapter definitely got me thinking, which I like. Yeah, I think Michael J Jackson uh, said it best when he said, yeah, I'm looking at the man in the mirror. That was a good quote. <laughs> so, those you, so good.
Wake up, everybody. Um, Wake up. I'll, I'll share. Um, one of the things that I really liked was the, um, the, the four dimensions of character. Uh, I really liked what, how he broke down authenticity and really just um, living between those lines. So like the line of failure and the line of success. Um, I think it's really cool how he did it. Um, and then like, just, I like how he said living in between it, you know, don't stay on the line of success or it's more of like, you know, like the, this is my highlight reel, right? This is when things are going great. That's all I'm going to share or, you know, leaning towards the failure line to where it's like, okay, yeah, you know, I'm not perfect and things like that. But the more you continue to just, you know, sit on that line, it's more of, you know, um, like you said, Murphy's law, right? If it's not one thing, it's another type of thing. Um, So I love that he says live in between it, you know, and I think he said, I think I, I highlighted a quote that I'm not finding right now. But I think it was it was like talking about how it probably was related with humility. Um, but it's like, you know, it was what happened in the past and those down times that really got you to, you know, push through and be successful. And, um, you know, so it's just being able to be relatable. You know, it's like I didn't I wasn't here this whole time, but I worked for it and I fought for it. And um, and that's kind of like how authenticity is, you know, and I think that also kind of like what we were talking about, like when you like brand yourself, right. It's, it's always nice to kind of like give people the before story and then get to that point of like, this is after, you know, and I'm so grateful from what I've been through because I would, if I didn't go through all that, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. Um, but yeah, I like that part of the book. That's huge. Does anybody know anybody that like always talks about only the good things, like how good they are? I only knew a handful of people growing and like through my entire life, I've run into a couple of those and always in the work environment, but it, it was the weirdest thing. I'd never seen anything like it before. And then there it was. I'm like, that dude never says, like, he never makes mistakes. He never does anything wrong. <laughs> like what a life he must live, you know? I know that in that same section, Leanne, it said, like, I want to direct people to the brokenness that led to my breakthroughs. And that's kind of what I gathered from that. I think that's what you were kind of on on with finding that quote. I just think that's where that authenticity is for a lot of us in, in health coaching and just embracing our brokenness and our missteps and humbling ourselves, you know? I'm partnering this book with um, this the speed of trust. And I, I loved how he quoted out of there. Um, and I'm almost done with that book, but there's a lot of things in here where he talks about, um, and it was actually just a part of the leading up, um, paragraph where he says, though, you cannot go back and make a brand new start. My friend, anyone can start from now and make a brand new end. So that, that part like really hit me too. It's like, yeah, okay, maybe um, we've depleted some trust deposits, you know, and um, Stephen Covey's book, he talks about buckets, you know, where you're kicking the bucket of trust. So, but in here, he's like, you can still, and in there, you can still um, fill that bucket back up as long as you're, you know, being aware, I think. So I really like that. I really enjoyed the whole section on on trust and kind of breaking it down a little bit um, and, and reminding us that trust isn't just earned as far as like receiving trust, but you have to give trust in order to receive it. Um, and I think that, you know, in, in what we do, right, like we're, we're sometimes helping people learn to trust themselves also. Um, so that was kind of cool. I liked the, um, I have all sorts of like little lines that I I just was like, oh, that's so good. What does he say? He says, um, if my people learn to trust me, I'll get their attention. But if I initiate trust in my people, I'll get their action. And I really liked that. And sometimes I think I find myself in that 
position where it's like, well, do they trust me? Yeah. But then I don't ask myself, like, do I trust them? And I think sometimes I don't and, and kind of wondering if maybe that's why I don't get their action. So it kind of, you know, starting to think about not just receiving trust of the people that I am leading, but making sure that I'm also giving them the trust and not just in business, right? Like just in life, like, am I, am I giving them trust as somebody that I love and care about? On page 54, I, I had a bunch of highlights that spoke to me as it was. Uh, sowing seeds of trust with people creates the fields of collaboration necessary to get extraordinary things done in organizations. That got a special highlight. Um, uh, as I grow older, I pay less attention to what people say. I just watch what they do. I think that uh, I think I've learned that more than ever in this business, for sure. And then the other one on page 54 is, um, he says, that's why in leadership, a pint of example, I had to read it a couple of times. I thought I was reading it wrong. A pint of example equals a gallon of advice. I was like, whoa. So the, that, uh, I got littered on this book. That was a good one for me. He also talked about on 54, the interactions with people that, you have every interaction is either a deposit or a withdrawal. So it was a reminder for me to, you know, it's maybe it's somebody at the grocery store or, you know, you go to coffee with a friend, like every one of those interactions is either a withdrawal or a deposit. Kind of partners with what Ashley was saying, she's like, you know, how, how you are with everyone. Are you different with different people? Yes. Even as something as small as being frustrated with, you know, maybe somebody, a server at a restaurant or, you know, the service, like how you respond to that mm. speaks volumes. That's true. That kind of gets me thinking about the guardrails that he talked about on page 61 just with self-management, but I just thought that was a really interesting thing to think about when it comes to our values, because that's what spills over, right? Is if we make those intentional, like, guardrails in our life, like, that's that protective thing, that that's that um, conviction that I have, that I'm going to treat people with dignity and respect, even when, you know, they're not giving me the best service, or when they're not respectful towards me, or whatever that looks like. Those are those things that we set as intentions so that we can follow through with them in moments like that. And so I thought that was such a great practical thing to think through and write down, like he mentioned in here of like, what are those things that like, who do I want to show up as no matter what in all these situations so that we can follow through with that and not, you know, I guess, falter in those types of situations and we can actually be consistent with our character. Mm. I like on 59 where um, he talks about the four dimensions to character and like living in between the lines um, and how when we are too high sometimes on our pedestal, some people will think that that's where we belong, right? Like we're always good and how um, it can just be false, right? Like and really just trying to be in between the lines so that it's not too high, not too low, like more relatable, right? Because when we go too high, everything's right. Everything's good. Everything's, everybody's on point, but then we dip too low and everything negative shows up in our life, right? Like all of a sudden everything's happening to us and not for us. Um, so it's really just that balance of living in between the lines. I really liked that. I'm glad you guys are talking about this because when I read this, I didn't interpret it the same way. But the way you guys are interpreting it is way better than my brain interpreted it. And that's why I'm glad I'm in this room because I wasn't reading it. Maybe it was late. Maybe that's why I wasn't, you know, sometimes comprehension isn't full, full uh, 
force at one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> well, and I mean, I've read it several times, so. Well, that's, yeah. I, I think it's important only for w within us, but what people are seeing, not, you know, so it's, it's like mm -hmm. this whole, right? Like, are you that guy that's going to be superficial and nothing's wrong in your world? Like, I think Facebook's maybe a good example of that, where, especially early on at Facebook, right? Like, everybody just had perfect lives. I'm like, it's the reels. What are you doing wrong? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for real, the highlight reels, for sure, for sure. Uh, or maybe, you know, if you're always talking about your failure, maybe you're living in the drama triangle, right? Maybe that's what Totally. And it's like trying to just keep that humble, right? Like, that real, yeah. Yeah, that sums it up for sure. Can I jump in? So no, for next, me, of course, for me, talking about yeah, page 59 really stood out. This is something Ashley has been helping me with is being authentic, being real. Um, because my generation, um, even though I'm 30, I still hang out with the 20 somethings. I still hang out with the younger generation um, just because um, minister calls and you serve where needs to be served. Um, and I have noticed, um, I've had people come up to me, um, since being a health coach, people have come up to me at church saying like, I thought you were fake on Instagram for a while, but seeing how you're living your life, um, off the camera and on the camera, you're authentic, you're real. And it hurt me at first. Um, but for me, it's like, when I reach out to somebody, Hey, how are you doing? How is your life? Like, I, I have a hard time talking about myself. And so like the other day, like Ashley encouraged me to, um, share on my story about what was going on with my family. Um, really quick second. I don't want the, I'm so sorry. Um, I just want y'all to know, like my dad was in the hospital, uh, last week for CCU um for heart issues and it was scary and like for me i had to cover it up because my dad didn't want it to be in public um he didn't want it on social media um just that's how my family is um but i asked my mom i was like can i be real and let people know like my dad's recovery his heart went from two or his, his heart went from 20 30 percent up to 60 percent and i just want to thank people like i was emotional i was raw you know, I thanked people. I literally went from like, la -dee da like, here's my life. Like, I'm healthy. I'm happy. Glub, glub. Here's my dog getting steps to, hey, I just want to take the time and say thank you to everyone who's reached out, who has called Facebook. I genuinely care. Um, and being real and people actually responded going like, I had no idea. Like, thank you. So being real and authentic has been something that I have lived for and strive for the past four years. Um, because my generation is great at like slabbing on the um, edit and photoing and photoshopping. And for me, it's like, I don't care if you see my crow's feet. I don't care if you see my line of grays. I don't care if you see my leftover makeup from Friday night. Like this is me and this is who I am and I'm going to live my life. And so reading this book has truly helped me. Um, like live my life out loud. I've been reading more of John Maxwell's books. Um, like I listen to his audios like daily and then having this has really helped me. I've turned into a bookworm since I've hit 30. I don't know what it is, but I'm digging it. Um, I'm at book five, just to let y'all know, besides this book, I'm at book five since nine 11 of this year. So being authentic has really helped me shine reading this and going, uh, 30, look at 59. So line of failure to line of success. It's okay to show your weaknesses. I show every now and then that I hate this stupid hill, uh, that my dog and I walk on, but I do it because it's going to give me strength. You know, my facial expressions show it that I'm not perfect. People have put me on the pedestal. I'm talking a lot. You can tell my feelings kicked in. Um, People have put me on a pedestal because, uh, you know, I'm a pastor's kid. I have to be perfect. I have to look all put together. But here I am, messy bun, leftover Friday night makeup. I don't care what I look like. This is me. I just got done walking my dog and I'm, you know, here at a book club, you know, breakfast breath. Who cares? Because. I'm here with real authentic people. And, you know, when I get off, I'm going to show that, like, I'm going to show that on 
my Instagram. I'm going to show that on Facebook because I want people to see like, you should be real. You should be authentic. Like being fake is so overrated. You know, no one likes the fake cake. People want the real juicy steak. That's my TED talk for the day. <laughs> uh, all I think I need to remember is no fake cake, juicy steak. That's what I there need to you go. <laughs> Welcome to my TED talk. <laughs> but to sum it up, I'm learning a lot and I'm very grateful for this book club. Oh, I love you. <laughs> he says in here, I, I wonder if some of our leaders in Optavia have read this because it says uh, author and speaker Ruth Haley Barton says, you know, we set young leaders up for a fall if we encourage if we if we encourage them to envision what they can do before considering what they should be. And I'll be honest, in this business, I really think that's what separates a lot of people. So agree. You know, who are we going to become? We've talked, even, even between us, we've talked about that. Who are we going to become? Who are we going to become? That's a tough one. Mm -hmm. I even think about well, that. and you only attract what you are. A tough one. Yeah. I don't attract anybody because I'm an introvert, so I don't talk to anybody. So better work on it. <laughs> no, I am statements when it comes to personality, Andrew. Those can be changed. Those are habits. <laughs> I know. Uh, when he talked about humility on page 62 and he talked about um, the leaders who work for their own benefit, it was a good reminder that if we continue to help the people on our team achieve their goals and what they want, then we in turn get the goals that we have. We don't have to just focus, just be laser focused on those goals that we have because we're helping others reach their goals and that in turn helps us. That was a huge shift um, for me and my business when I when I realized that point. Like um, Shire and I, you know, we've been doing this together. She was my first coach, and you know, I mean, in a, in some sense, we were building together. But then there had to be a shift for me to help her get her her goals too, right? And the same with all my other coaches. Like I had to figure out how to, yes, still it's kind of like a pivoting back and forth thing, like where you really have to be involved with them and how they're, how they're feeling and, and moving forward and things like that. Um, and you're right. I mean, it kind of does do this like circle of life, if you will. Right. <laughs> but there are, there are a lot of those little side, side quotes, excuse me, about the humility stuff that I really liked. Um, you know, humility is saying a radical yes to the human condition. Um, but I want to kind of go back a little bit about, and it's on page 60, where they talk about the mosaic and how um, I think I like to think of myself as a mosaic made of many broken pieces, um, but beautiful pieces put together to make, you know, something amazing. And then there's that little section in there where she says mosaic is, is at a once interacted, get majestic. <clears throat> Anyways, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but that really like that. And then the partnering with that mirror, the mirror and me, I, I think it might just be where I'm at. And I know we're going to all take different places depending on where we or take out different things, depending on where we are with this. But, um, those two things like really hit me the mirror me and the mosaic part that was really powerful I totally agree embrace our brokenness right like it there's there's beauty from the ashes there's beauty from our brokenness we just have to like continually reflect and be humble and like 
be open about those things and not just show the highlight reel. There's something with that though, Ashley, is that, and I'm, I'm learning this. It's, it's it, it, to be, what did I, I read this in something in a different book to be broken means that you're, you're done, you're garbage, you're thrown away. You can't be, you can't be anything more. Right. When really, truly, in fact, these are just like little, and that's where I think of that mosaic piece because it's, a mosaic's not broken. It's just a bunch of pieces put together, right? And so um, I think that's why I took that powerful, that that much power from it because I'm not broken. No, just- and I think brokenness, I think that's like the wrong definition of brokenness because brokenness to me is humanity. Like it's like, mm-hmm. I'm not perfect. Mm-hmm. Like I will fail. Mm-hmm. So those are the broken pieces. Like, and I've had hardships. Like that's just real life. Um, yeah, I like that. Uh, we're not garbage because we fail. Like that's just, I'm not perfect. Um, yeah. I love that whole visual of the mosaic. I loved that part. Um, the one last thing that I just think is like super huge for me personally is, um, continually reflecting and working to restore good character after making bad decisions. Like, I think that's such a huge thing. I know that I personally have to do as I, you know, try to be a better leader is like, sometimes there's missteps too. And and I've had them and it's like owning them and reflecting on that and being humble in those moments. But like, building your character back from that and gaining trust back, not even back, but like continuing to like create more trust because you're owning those things and not claiming to be perfect. Like, Ooh, that I screwed up on. I love that so much. Um, This paragraph with like my coaching partners, like personally in my own like relationships and stuff helped me so much over the past year And it was, um, there are times in every leader's life when he feels obligated to take people where he has not himself gone, to talk further than he has walked. Um, And you don't feel confident or competent enough, right? But he says, experienced enough, strong enough, but at those times, acknowledge your weakness, ask God and others to help you and so much the courage to take action, right? So like, not always having the answers, it's how I interpret that but being willing to be there in the trenches and doing it anyways and helping to find um, defines you, right? And that's the courage. That's the the hard part (laughs) is even when they are, you're learning from them is finding the courage to still show up. Oh, I could get my mate, my brain getting over here, Marisa. Uh, well, here's the thing. I, I, and some of you know this firsthand that Cindy and I have made mistakes in this business. Um, missteps. We're not perfect, and, and you won't be either. And um, and sometimes those missteps take away trust. And um, and hopefully you've developed the uh, your trust buckets are full, really, he- you know, high with the people that. Because some, you know, even in here it talks about it and he borrows from the trust book about how those mistakes will be withdrawals. Um, and and I, I feel like I've, and it was a lot of people that like we, we get to work with, like I've made mistakes with Eric Boyette and, but he, he gives me grace, right? Where, you know, it's like he, I, he, he can see Cindy and I from a different point of view because he knows that that mistake wasn't intentional and it wasn't out of, it was, a, it was an honest mistake or we didn't see that coming or, you know, um, but it's going to happen. And, and it's good to have those conversations with the people that you partner with because we're, we're with, like Marisa says, sometimes we're forging in areas that haven't been made yet in Optavia, right? We're doing things because when we started this, um, we weren't as, as an organization, we weren't as big, obviously, but even Jamil's organization wasn't as big. The Bombas organization wasn't as big. So things are evolving that the Bombas have never seen in their business and even Cindy and I. Um, so we're, we're going to be trying things and trying to grow and, um, do things that maybe wasn't, um, 
even though the, the right things, in my opinion, weren't weren't necessarily um, uh, done by example uh, above us, right? So, and and we're gonna we're gonna grow together, and and even stuff like this, like this wasn't something that happened. We weren't doing leadership book clubs in Optavia two years ago. Nobody was initiating. You know what I mean? Like, but it's fun. It's not like groundbreaking, but it's fun, and it's moving us along together. Um, but, uh, but yeah, anyway, I say that only to say that this is going to happen for you guys. It's going to happen. There's going to be times where, you know, things don't go right and you got to go back and, and as Rachel Rachel said, die on your sword a little bit. You're like, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I, I apologize. You know what I mean? Just apologizing and, and uh, growing from it. But we all, we're all going to growing together through this. Thank you, Marisa. You made my brain trigger. <laughs> Anybody else? I can't remember. We even do book up for an hour, 30 minutes. I don't even know. <laughs> I know we're almost, you know, basically kind of uh, almost to the end of this chapter, kind of the way it's been evolving. Anything else you guys had takeaways from? Nobody? Um, I really like this quote that um, Betty brought up during the humility section. Um, he said it's uh, Thomas by Thomas Kempis. Um, it says, be not angry that you cannot make others as you wish them to be, since you cannot make yourself as you wish to be. And I love that so much. And I, I, he even just said, you know, that made a strong impression on me because at that time I did want to change others. Um, I had to learn how to focus on changing and improving myself. And so I, I definitely love this book club so much. Um, I mean, it's holding me accountable for reading these leadership books. And, and, and really improving myself and being better. So, yeah, I love that. Mm, so good. What's our next book? This ah. is what Erica does, by the way. We won't even finish one thing. <laughs> we're doing this thing in October. We're doing this thing next week, and she's like, "Okay, where's next? Where's the next one?" And I'm like, can we get this? Are we one? done? Washington. <laughs> Georgia's next. Seattle. <laughs> I will say I just finished the Atomic Habit yesterday. Mm -hmm. Two days to or two days to listen to it. Atomic Habit, oh, yeah. definitely recommend it. I will buy the book. I'll listen to it. But Atomic Habit, so worth it, Erica. Like I vote for that book. That is a good one. Stop I'll trying to make me too. read multiple books at one time. Oh, it's so much fun to dip in little buckets and read multiple books at a time. Then they all come together. It is. <laughs> My brain does not work like that, y'all. Mine like, either. It does not. I cannot. I'm reading for you. I'm reading six different books. Like, I can totally do this. These authors borrow from each other. You can clearly see that as they're making their point of their book, right? And so you Well, and especially if we're in the self-development realm right like they all have about the same principles the same like so charles will be like is this the habits of health we're reading and i'm like honey <laughs> no but yes like <laughs> we're in the world of self-development it's all going to be the same sort of principles right like <laughs> sure. i mean if i hadn't read the habits of health or the life book i would have never known about the drama triangle and totally on the drama triangle that talked about different aspects of the drama triangle that Dr. A didn't cover in his book, right? Like, right. But he had to learn it somewhere. Absolutely. So that's <laughs> what I do, to be honest with you. Like, when <laughs> I'm reading this book and he goes, and then author so and so said this in this book, I'm like, yeah. got to buy that book. Mm -hmm. it influenced him in his books, right? Like, what, why he's writing this, there's different influences that he's had. But uh, Atomic Habits is a great book. Um, <laughs> I've also started reading The Coaching Habit. It's a good one. It's a good one, yeah. Um, taking some nuggets from that for sure. Um, which I'm actually having conversations with Cindy about. Um, hey guys, I might be the person to come to if you ever need suggestions. Yeah. Uh, Just so you know, because <laughs> I have an addiction. Wait till you come to my house, Marisa, and you can see my library. You'll see the addiction. Do you want to see my Audible? It's a forty dollar monthly addiction. Lexi Audible over here. Yeah, like three books a month. <laughs> Come at me, bro. I'll show you my Audible. Like, <laughs> what you got? <laughs> Humble too. Yeah. What you got? <laughs> Don't 
don't one up me. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I feel like we forgot everything we were just talking about, you guys. Like, no, I read more. No, you read more. I don't. You guys win. You're right. No, you do. You do. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. All right, you guys. Uh, love chatting with you on here about this. Thank you guys for your revelations. Like I said, I some of the stuff I didn't even view it from that point of view. So I'm glad I got to hear your points of view on it. Um, all right, you guys. Great book club. Chapter 14. Have a good week. Bye, guys.